And so let's, let's pursue this a little bit. If you admit that you exist, then I suggest that there are two possibilities about how that existence came into being. The top statement is a statement from a document put out by an atheistic group. And I think it eloquently summarizes the atheist position. That doesn't mean every atheist would agree with it, but I think it's a pretty concise statement of some of the fundamentals of atheist belief. The bottom statement is not offered as a proof of anything, and let me emphasize that. You know, when I was an atheist, I used to find that people somehow felt that if they quoted scripture to me as an atheist, that that was going to convince me about something. And if you're an atheist, I want to say to you, I'm not going to attempt to prove anything to you by quoting scripture. So that's not why this is up. It is up because I think it is a very clear, concise statement, and especially in the original language, a concise statement, of what those who believe in God hold to be true. So now let's take a look at each one of these. In the very first statement, we'll come back to these periodically as we go along in the development of our logical argument. The universe is eternal. Now, the important point here is that an atheist will maintain everything has always been basically as it is. Matter energy never had a beginning. It will never have an end. So the concept is that everything has basically always been in the form that it is, perhaps has changed forms from energy to matter or from some conceptual position to another, but that everything has always been, there was no beginning. Now, if you're a religious person looking at this, and if you say, well, that's kind of crazy, as an atheist, I would say to you, well, where did God come from? And if you were to say to me, well, God has always been, then my question to you has to be, why is it any more reasonable to believe that God has always been than it is to believe that matter has always been? And this was eloquently stated many years ago by Carl Sagan in his book, Cosmos. So I think it's important to recognize that the atheist has a very valid position here, a good question. And in one of our radio videos, we will talk about where did God come from? Because I think that's a valid question, and one that is important in understanding the nature of God. But that's not our subject right now. Right now, I just want to point out to you, you can't just blow this off. Now, there's another perspective. And the other perspective, as we said, is taken from the Bible. But let's take a quick look at the literal meaning of these words. And what we've done in this chart is that we have taken the first five words of Genesis, and we have shown what the Hebrew word for each of those English statements is, the meaning that is given for these words taken from a lexicon and how many times it is used that way. Now, the reason this is brought up is because the Hebrew word reshit is an eloquent statement of the opposing position to what we just saw. The word reshit literally refers to something that never existed before. So in short, the Bible is maintaining there was a beginning. So the atheist says there was no beginning. The believer says there was a beginning. This is a nice, clear, contradictory set of beliefs. How do we answer the question? My response to that is, look at the scientific evidence. And what we propose to do in the rest of this video and in the next one is to show you some of that evidence.